Hello and welcome to the tow car and today's subject is the air conditioning. Well personally I leave my air conditioning on 365 days a year. I've owned this car six years and four months and I've never switched it off. During the warmer months it provides fresh cool air and at the moment it's 23.5 degrees and I'm sat in here nice and refreshed and in the winter I'll nudge the temperature up a little bit and I'll get conditioned warm air. During the really colder winter months, 4 degrees and below, even though the air conditioning switch is switched on, the compressor will be off more than it is on. And that's controlled by the de-icing thermostat in the evaporator. And that has to prevent the evaporator from freezing. Because the air conditioning is providing dehumidified air, during wet weather, all I'll do is adjust the temperature to suit and it keeps the interior free of condensation, keeping everything dry. After one particular holiday, we were towing home late at night. We got home at two o'clock in the morning. Even at night, we've got the air conditioning on. We've got a cool 17 and a pleasant 18. It helps to keep you alert, freshens the interior. And at the moment, we're towing the caravan. I'll show you how this one works. This is dual climate control. We've got a driver display and a passenger display. And we also have additional displays appear in this multimedia interface screen. There's also auto settings, one for driver, one for passenger. What auto does is maintains your set temperature by altering the fan speed and air distribution. Now it's rare I use auto because I want my own uh, fan speed and air distribution. So if I turn auto on for the driver, for example, it's increased the airspeed and it's put the air distribution into auto setting. Now pressing the auto button doesn't switch it off. What you have to do is alter the fan speed and that switches the auto off, but it's also left the air distribution in auto so what I have to do with that is turn it back to my individual setting let's have a closer look at that as well as the two displays here driver passenger there's also the additional displays in the multimedia screen driver passenger and we can alter the temperature accordingly fan speed air distribution fan speed air distribution If I select 19 degrees, there's the fan speed. You see the arrow at uh, speed 10. That means if I was to switch auto on, it would automatically select fan speed 10 to get the interior close to 19. And as soon as it starts getting close to 19, it would automatically lower the fan speed. And then it tries to maintain that temperature. We've also got this air conditioning. If I select that, I can scroll down to center outlets and I can have the center outlets anything from cool to warm, independent of the outer vents. I'll show you a quick overview of how an air conditioning system works and the reasons for failures. This is a quick overview of an air conditioning system. This is the compressor which is belt driven via this magnetic clutch. The magnetic clutch switches the compressor on and off and it's controlled by the de-icing thermostat which is there and the on off switch inside the car. The compressor acts as a pump sucking gas refrigerant from the evaporator which is this under low pressure gas and it pumps it to the condenser under high pressure gas and this is the condenser the condenser sits in front of the car's coolant radiator the condenser condenses the gas refrigerant coming from the compressor by cooling it to its condensation temperature the condenser is uh, cooled via these electric fans. Sometimes they sit on the outside of the condenser 
and sometimes they're on the inside of the car's coolant radiator. The refrigerant is then under high pressure liquid and it goes through the dehydrator. The dehydrator stores the refrigerant coming from the condenser, absorbs any water present and filters the refrigerant. It's then under high pressure liquid through to the expansion valve. The expansion valve meters the refrigerant into the evaporator, which is then low pressure. It's controlled by the temperature and pressure sensor in the valve. This is the de-icing thermostat that measures the evaporator temperature and controls the magnetic clutch on the compressor accordingly. The refrigerant then goes through the evaporator. The evaporator works as a heat exchanger. The air flowing through the fins is cooled, cleaned and dried. The refrigerant is then under low pressure gas back to the compressor and the cycle continues. I'll show you the evaporator on the caravan fridge. This is the caravan fridge and this is the evaporator with these fins and it's these fins that get cold and condensation forms on them and that's why you've got a drain channel there and a drain hole there and that's why you get a pool of water forming underneath the car because of the condensation draining off the evaporator as well as refrigerant there is also refrigerant oil in the system the purpose of compressor oil is to lubricate and cool the moving parts of the compressor. Inside the compressor are pistons which pump the refrigerant around the system. The oil film also protects the rubber seals in refrigerant lines and connections, reducing the amount of refrigerant leaking out. Well, the main body of the compressor has a seal near the front, a seal in the middle and a seal near the back and a shaft seal. And on the refrigerant lines, there are seals at all the connections with the condenser, the dehydrator, the compressor, the expansion valve and the evaporator. The oil has to be pressure and temperature resistant in all operating conditions. The evaporator will be in a housing like this with all different flaps placed all over and these flaps open and close at varying angles depending on the required temperature and air distribution. All these flaps are operated by these servo motors and the servo motors are operated by the potentiometers depending on how far open the flap needs to be and then we have temperature sensors for the air distribution such as there's a sensor in the air suction duct, one for the blowout temperature left foot well, right foot well, one in the evaporator, one in the left face level air vent, on the right face level air vent. So there's quite a few there. And then we have all these sensors, fresh air intake duct temperature sensor, air quality sensor, Evaporator outflow temperature sender, high pressure sender, sunlight penetration photo sensor, humidity sender. And these are all linked to all these various components and so on. There's also a pollen filter and that's accessed from the passenger footwell and it's up behind the dashboard. On some cars, the pollen filter is accessed from under the bonnet. The pollen filter filters out any dead flies and debris and pollen before the air gets to the evaporator. That's the interior temperature sensor. And that's the sun penetration sensor on top of the dashboard. So, as you can see, it's a very complex system. When you hear the statement, keep your air conditioning switched off to save fuel, that is actually bad advice. What they don't tell you is, by not having it on, will eventually cause system failure. 
because the seals dry out and the refrigerant escapes because it's not circulating the refrigerant oil and that could happen on any joint in the system so to put that little bit of extra fuel in is really insignificant compared to repair costs of course many other reasons for system failure are the failure of electronic components another cause of system failure is if a stone gets thrown from a vehicle in front goes through the radiator grill and hits the condenser all it needs is a pinhole and you've got refrigerant loss looking under the bonnet these are the refrigerant lines a low pressure and a high pressure it's normal for a system to lose so many grams per year well i have this serviced at audi every two years as they recommend pressure gauges are connected to these ports and if it's low on refrigerant out of specification it's topped up let's have a look at the specification It's refrigerant R134A and the system quantity is 550 grams with a tolerance of plus or minus 20 grams. And they use an aircon cleaner. I don't know whether they use this mate but this is a good example. The can is placed in the footwell, the blower is switched to recirculation and then the can is activated and it sprays inside the car. And then the blower pulls it in through the evaporator and out of the vents and it leaves a, a nice smell as well as eliminating bacteria and viruses and now you can see why i keep my air conditioning on permanently i keep my windows and sunroof shut it provides dehumidified air preventing condensation cleans the air freshens the interior helps to prevent driver and passenger fatigue and i value my comfort and the comfort of my passengers and that's the air conditioning in my tow car. See you next time.